Happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome to another Sunday Morning View Queue, where I answer your questions about my full-time RV life, and I'm in a good mood today, because today I'm going to answer a bunch of questions that came up on Wednesday's video, where I got clipped by a semi in the Cabela's parking lot. You guys asked me about police reports and deductibles and cameras and putting your slides out. I'll answer all that stuff today, and there were also some great questions from the last view queue, like, how do nomads complete the census? How do they vote? How do you find good roads in national forest land? So I'm going to address all of that and more. Happy Sunday, bird watchers! I hope you're all doing well out there. So I'm going to get right to the questions today because there are a bunch of them and they're really, really good. The first one I want to mention is Chris Thompson said, now your camper has character. Oh yeah. I don't think you can be in an RV, especially if you boondock or go to like National Forest campgrounds like I do and not have blemishes on your RV. Um, they're battle scars. They're love scars. And on my last two rigs also, yeah, I had some little dings and scrapes. You know, sometimes you go past a tree and, you know, the trees are going into your road. There's nothing you can do and they'll put little tiny scratch marks. That was not this. Yeah, I got a lot of character. A lot of character now. First, let me mention Cabela's really quick. Cabela's and like Walmart, Cracker Barrel, some of those types of places do allow RVs to stay overnight. But it changes by city and county and the manager of that store. I actually did a video like a year and a half ago as Walmart over where I post the actual rules. And sure enough, they say don't put your slides out. I've shown you rest area things where they say don't camp. That means don't put out your chairs. Don't put out a barbecue. Don't put out your slide. You're not camping. You're staying overnight. And I have to tell you, I have said myself that you shouldn't do it <laughs> because you might get clipped. I don't want to be an attractive nuisance. So I try not to put my slide out. But... I went to this Cabela's and the situation I thought was a little bit different. This is what happened. I don't like to go to cities and just stay in a parking lot to stay in a parking lot. I always do it for a logistical purpose. Like when I go to Phoenix, it's to have work done or something like that. Well, in this case, I had to go pick my mom up from the airport. And then we were going to go boondock because she's never done that in the desert, which we did. It was great. And then take her back to Phoenix. Her flight left early in the morning and got in late at night. So we were going to stay at a casino that I usually stay in there, which is great. You go in and register. You can stay for a couple days. And my dumb butt didn't call first. So I pull up. Security guard said, we're under renovation. But go to the Cabela's around the corner. They allow overnight parking. Well, I knew where the Cabela's was because I had shopped there. But I called just in case because every place is different. And sure enough, this Cabela's was a little weird. Sometimes Cabela's have their own campgrounds and dump stations and horse stalls and all kinds of stuff, right? Depending on where they are. This one does not own their lot. So I called and the lady said, yes, we have an RV parking lot. The city of Glendale owns our parking lot and they allow you to stay for one day. After that, you can be ticketed, but we don't provide security. So let me get to a question that many of you asked. Road Carver said, I heard RV etiquette in overnight parking spots says you should never put out your slides. Has anyone seen this online? Well, I've said in my own videos, like the Walmart video, you shouldn't do it. And then people yell and say, well, you don't understand. My RV doesn't work without the slide out. I do understand. That's why all three of the rigs I've had, you can get to all your stuff with the slides in. My rig, I can get to the bedroom. I can get to the bathroom. I just can't get to the kitchen. So I come back to this Cabela's and I scored this great spot, which I'll show you right here. This is the actual parking lot. I scored a spot up near the exit that actually on the right-hand side had a storage container that was on blocks, so not moving. So on the right-hand side, the non-damaged side, I shimmied up close to that. And then on the other side, there was actually an empty space. I kept my slide in, but then another couple came in a trailer, who were arguing, by the way, <laughs> like all day. In the morning, I got up. I wanted to sit in my chair and have a cup of coffee and wait for rush hour to die down before I went to my boondocking spot. I think there's a container right here. The couple was still right there. So I put out the slides enough to get in my chair and make a cup of coffee. Didn't really think it was that big of a deal. Didn't think it was that big of a risk because I thought I was between two stationary places. My slide was not in traffic. My slide was not out on a turn where I thought anybody would ever get close to it. But they did. What happened was I was sitting here, 
These blinds were closed where the couple was. This blind was open. So I'm sitting in my chair and I see the semi come straight down, like you'll see here in this reenactment I made for you guys. He comes straight down, takes a left-hand turn into the space next to me going like 20, 25 miles an hour and a right turn out, which made my whole rig go like this. He kept going, I thought it was fine. So a couple hours later, I see the damage. Like Carol says, when I park in a parking lot, I always park next to a grass island. I make sure I pull in with the right side facing the island. That's the only slide I put out. Carol, I hear ya. I thought I was safe between two stationary objects, but I wasn't. So the guy hit me, right? Didn't even know it. I got some variation of this question a lot. Becky M said, dash cams use a cigarette lighter. You can program them to turn on when they detect movement. Yeah, I have one of those. So they actually don't work if you put them in your cigarette lighter because when you turn off the car, they don't have any more power. So I got a special adapter. It goes down into my diagnostic port. I had taken the SIM card out of it so I could download some footage while I was in the RV. Otherwise, it would have turned on when it felt the jolt and I would have gotten the guy's information but I didn't. A lot of you wanted me to get a bunch of cameras and now I'm thinking about it. Before I thought the cameras were just to pick up like wildlife and stuff, but not anymore. A lot of you said something like Debbie Shoup who said, doesn't Cabela's have cameras? That guy needs to be caught. A lot of you said this. So I did not call Cabela's to ask if they had footage because the lady told me there was no security. And Cabela's was on this side of my rig the guy went through literally on that side of my rig, so if they were pointing a camera, they wouldn't have picked it up anyway. And as you may know, I worked in insurance for like 20 years, and Doug still does. And um, it's extremely rare that they could get information like license plates um, and CPU numbers and stuff off those cameras. And it's a hassle for insurance, and I'll explain that in a second. You know, stuff happens. A lot of you asked me if I thought he knew he hit me. You know, in the beginning I thought, there's no way he did not know that he hit me. And then I thought maybe he didn't know he hit me. I mean, the thing is that the lines go like this, which happens when people are correcting. So if I had to guess, I'd say maybe, <laughs> I don't know. You know, a few truck drivers got on in the comments and they said, there's no way that guy didn't know he hit you. And the next guy would say, there's no way that guy knew he hit you, right? People were all over the board, so, I mean, I don't know. Probably, I think he probably did because of the correction lines. Glorious Life on Wheels, oh, I love that name, by the way, says, hit and run is a crime. You can file a police report and they will pull the parking lot camera footage to identify the driver. Okay, just because I worked at insurance and I did go ahead and verify, so I make sure I'm giving you guys the right information. Hit and run is a crime, but the police will not come to a private parking lot to take a report. They won't. Um, it's private property, and if you really harangue them, they will come out and write something called an incident report. It's not the same thing as an accident report. It's basically if somebody insists that it be on record. But it's not the same thing as an accident report where they, you know, take pictures and there's the trajectory and they, you know, see who may have done what. They don't do that because it's private property. So it's just my background. I already knew that they probably didn't have security. If they did, it wouldn't have caught the accident. And if I could get the footage, they probably couldn't read it. <laughs> and I couldn't get a police report anyway. Plus, this happened the week that the state started to lock down, and I thought Cabela's probably wasn't even open. I don't know. I didn't ask. Oh, I wanted to share this comment with you from Texas. So, hi, Robin. It happened to us, too. We were in a left turning lane. A semi came up beside us very close. I figured he was going straight and relaxed a bit until I heard and felt what I thought was the wind. In turning right, he scraped our right side of our trailer. We never got him, and now we're worried about all the semi-trucks that go by. They buffed it out. Yeah, it happens. Actually, I looked at a bunch of stuff, you know, for this view queue. You know how I can go down rabbit holes, and it does happen. You know, I interviewed about 100 truckers on truckerreport.com asking them about us being in truck stops and rest areas and got safety tips from them. And for the most part, they were just great. And I have said to people, I support the truck drivers. They have a hard job. We need them. But they do have 70 to like 90% turnover on the latest stats I found. So there's a lot of new ones. They're under a lot of stress. And they have to stop on a clock. 
and rest, you know, where they could get fined or lose their CDL. I try never to take a trucker spot, but, you know, I'm not bagging on the truck drivers. Um, there are good truck drivers and bad truck drivers, just like there are people. So that's the way it goes. Jeffrey Vasquez said, $8,000, that's nuts, no way. And somebody else said, be free, LMAO, <laughs> $8,000. Oh, you guys, I was completely shocked. I was pleasantly surprised to find out that the windows were like 200 bucks a piece, a little less. I was just going to order them through the dealer, buff out some of the scratches, get a new vent cover, but then I saw how deep it was. And these grooves in the paint are very deep, some of them. And that's what led to the big bill. I did not have any interior damage in the cabinets or undercarriage or anything like that that they have found so far. But I've only had the window fixed, right? Because of um, the quarantine and everyone's just getting back to work. When the dealership did their estimate, they decided that they were going to completely have to take off the panels on the outside and replace the panels because they couldn't fix the paint otherwise. The paint was so deep it could not be buffed out or repaired. They would have to actually replace the metal piece. And that's why it was so expensive. I don't even know if I'm going to do it. I mean, honestly. Okay, TS said, did your insurance cover all but the deductible? Yes. It's not that big of a deal. I got sideswiped in a parking lot. I'm lucky it wasn't on the road. I'm lucky it didn't hit my gas lines, right? I'm lucky that I have insurance with a $500 deductible. Happy I did that instead of a thousand. I'm going to move on to happier topics. Okay, I got a few like this recently. Trey Tech says, do you think you'll ever get a beautiful scenic piece of land one day since you like to stay in one spot for a while like the other nomad Tiki did, which I just visited her property, by the way, in New Mexico. Just gorgeous. That's similar to the question from Lori that said, I'm hearing from so many nomads that things have changed so much, especially for people who want to boondock, that they feel it's not going to be doable as it has been. Many are purchasing home bases. I'd like to know your thoughts. Okay, a couple things. I think about getting a little piece of land someday. The problem, though, is that um, I keep thinking I'll fall in love with some place, but I fall in love with every place. And every time I go to a new beautiful spot, I go, oh, I could live here. Oh, I could live here. Oh, I could live here. Right now, I'm in an RV park. Because of some personal considerations, I had to be in one spot um, for about another month because I've got some other stuff coming up here that I'll tell you about later. In about a month, I'll have a better idea what my travels are going to be. I'm already antsy. So that tells me maybe no. Maybe I won't. Yes, I still think RVing is doable. There are so many options. In fact, I've been working on a big article and video for you guys that's going to come out a week from today on all the different options right now and how to check and see what's available and then also how to do some planning. It was tricky there for a couple weeks and it might continue to be a little tricky in some areas. I think if you have the widest arsenal of camping options that you can, it absolutely makes it more doable. I always say camp like you. So staying in an RV park for a couple of months works for you, do it. I know some people that have done that recently so they can see what happens. If boondocking works, do it. If you want to be long-term in a spot or do National Forest campgrounds or be a part-timer, what do it. It's up to you. Just know that there are so many ways to do this, and I'll share it with you next Sunday. Okay, Jay Elkhorn Camper says, How do full-time nomads get counted in the census, and how do we vote? Okay. In my second-to-last book, Be a Nomad, Change Your Life, I have a whole section on residency. I've also done a video on it, I think. As a nomad, you get to choose your state of residence, the one that works for you, but there are some logistical and, and tax considerations. Let's say that you are a resident in a state that allows mail-in voting or absentee voting. You can have a forwarding service forward that piece of mail to you so you can fill it out and vote. If you're a resident in a state that does not allow that for some reason, then you have to be prepared to be in that state to vote. As far as the census goes, it's the same thing. You want to choose your state of residence to go in and fill out the census so that they have your information. You know, as nomads, we're not homeless. We just choose an alternate housing option. But most of us, like me, you know, have jobs, we pay taxes. 
we have a driver's license, we're residents of a state, and so, like everybody else, we get to vote and also fill out the census and all that good stuff. Okay, KT said, I watched your video on how to find free camping, an oldie but a goodie. I can find the Forest Service roads, but how do you know what the terrain is like? Certainly an RV isn't exactly off-road capable, well, KT, I'll tell you. When I started, I went down roads. I had no business going down uh, because of that. When you go into Google Maps, you can change the terrain setting and you can actually see what the terrain is like. So what I look for is really steep up and downs around that Forest Service Road. I'll go into like freecampsites.net for that area and see what the comments are about off-roading. And I always, if I'm going to be camping in the mountains especially, um, not so much in the desert because it's not as bad, I always look at the spot on Google Earth because then you can actually zoom down and look at all the little veins in the road that you can park in. You can see how far it is from the paved road and you can really see the condition of the road. It does help a lot. Finally, I want to address a comment that I got about a week ago on the video with No Legs No Problem, which was about a triple amputee who lived part of the year in a trailer solo and how he did that. And I got a comment from somebody else that was disabled, and I apologize because I can't find it now. I don't know if you removed it, but I forgot to take a screenshot of it, so I apologize. But it really stayed with me because basically that comment was, um, she doesn't like it when I say what one person can do, another person can do. Because she's disabled and she's on a fixed income. And I have to say, I really gave that a lot of thought afterwards, and I get your point. I see it. I guess what I want to say is... When I think what one person can do, another person can do, it's a pep talk for me personally that if I'm about to do something and I get scared, I might go, well, Tiki did it, Doug did it, you did it, I can do it. But I can't deadlift 500 pounds. I mean, somebody else can, I can't, right? Somebody else can maybe buy a yacht. I can't. Those are the things I think of when I say that phrase personally. What I mean is I don't want to limit myself. For myself, if I see another woman, for example, doing something that I thought I couldn't do, I want to rethink that and think maybe I could do it. Like have happy travels and be free. I'm not living for free in this RV. The repairs on the RV aren't free. What I say that for is that for me when I first started this journey those are the things that I wanted I really had to write down what I wanted out of this life I wanted to have a happy life and I wanted to be free from those things that I thought were holding me down and that's why I am my videos that way so thank you for your very thoughtful comment and thanks to everybody else who left comments. If you have a question or a comment, please do leave it down below. I hope to see you all out on the road soon or doing something you love. Until then, have happy travels and be free.